Talking back the night, One Meal is a campaign that was launched just before Christmas and involves a series of events for people out on the streets and who are doing it really tough around Sydney with a view to taking it to more locations around the country and throws in a couple of well-known celebrity chefs just for good measure. Paul Mackin is the founder of One Meal and joins me on Talking Back the Night. G'day, Macca. G'day, how are you, Christian? I'm very well, mate. Congratulations on One Meal. I think it's a, it's a great idea. Before I get you to tell us more about it and your, your plans for One Meal, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, well, Christian, uh, as you know, we've spoken in the past. I'm a uh, interstate truck driver and um, I've uh, been involved in the transport industry for many, many years. So, and, uh, and then uh, alongside of that, I've always had a bit of a passion for food and cooking as well. Life in the early days for Macca wasn't all that great. There were some hurdles that you had to overcome. Is that one of the, the reasons or factors in you wanting to give to other people partially through this one meal campaign? Yeah, absolutely. I've, uh, I've always, uh, always wanted to uh, do something where I can give back, I mean, to people that are uh, less fortunate. And, uh, you know, uh, I guess a lot of us have had our ups and downs throughout our life. And, uh I um, I just seen that um, you know many of these people as well are going through a real tough time and um, yeah it's it's just something I've uh, I've wanted to do and it was uh, it, it just grew from um, being something I wanted to do on a one off uh, mm. and uh, really enjoyed what I did and uh, wanted to take it further. The first one meal event took place in Sydney just before Christmas. Tell us a little bit about that and and how it all came together. I'd been thinking about it for quite some time, um, you know, and through social media and uh, other media outlets, you, you see a lot of um, situations uh, and probably sad situations, uh, especially leading up to Christmas, of how a lot of these people will see Christmas out and and uh, going forward from there. So, um, you know, I've uh, I think life's been good to me in general, and um, I wanted to um, I wanted to do something. So um, that was my way, I guess, of giving back. And I decided that um, you know, whilst I was I was unavailable for Christmas itself, and I know there's a lot of other excellent foundations out there um, that are involved in this. Um, obviously, the problem's still a growing problem. So I just wanted to do something. As from from me and I had a couple of friends that also uh, wanted to jump on board and uh, decided to cook some uh, some really nice meals and take them down to uh, Darlinghurst, uh, a suburb of Sydney, and where there's a, a, a populated area of homeless people and uh, yeah, feed them. What was the response? <clears throat> the response was really good, actually, um, and better than I anticipated. Um, and look, I'll be honest with you, I, I hadn't done any research. It was just. Uh, it was off the cuff, and I guess right. sometimes that can be a little bit uh, dangerous in, in some some aspects, you know. Um, it could have been a complete failure, but um, it, it, I, I, I did research in the sense that I, I did speak to a couple of the organisations that were going out there, and they suggested to me a few locations that could probably right. do with that area, with, with that type of service in that area because they don't get it all the time. So that's uh, when I decided, well, I'll... Uh, I'll take it to that next level. And I went out and I did that, and uh, it was a great response. We fed probably about 50 people on the night and had um, had a lot of those people come back for seconds and thirds. Look, I've done some things in the past that I've never really flagged with anyone as far as uh, charity-type events and so forth. Yeah. And I've, uh, like I said, I've always liked doing that type of thing. And, uh, you know, I, I just felt a real connection. Um, it was really good... Um, some of them were more than happy to tell a bit of their story and, and talk. And, and I just I really got that connection with the people. And I thought, you know, I just can't go away to, on that particular night and, and you know, just sort of say, OK, well, I've done my part and off I go. I, I thought, you know, whilst, you know, I can't save the world, but, um, you know, I knew that there was opportunity for me to go back there and do it again. So that's what I wanted to do. And the couple of friends that came down with me, decided that they were happy to do it again and it's grown from there. Yeah. You've also got the involvement of a couple of well-known chefs. Tell us about that. Yeah, look, what I did is um, on Australia Day, actually, I sent out, uh, I've got a few um, few of these people um, connected in social media 
and I had sent him out a message on Australia Day and said, guys, you know, this is what I want to do, and uh, gave him a bit of notice, and I said, look, on the 1st of March, let's uh, let's get down and um, feed the homeless and, you know, bring some really good quality food along and uh, go from there, you know. And, um, yeah, look, I, I did a good response from that, um, and going forward... Uh, I, I think that um, we'll be able to involve uh, a lot of these um, well-known uh, celebrity chefs and people that have done really well for themselves over time as the organisations grow. Um, so we, we were lucky to um, lucky enough that uh, Manu from My Kitchen Rules has agreed to come along, and um, we're and we're also um, there's another uh, couple of chefs, uh, Daniel from a, an organisation in Sydney from Fork and Knife, and uh, Giuseppe from um, the Italian Cooking Class dot com. So they've all agreed to come to come down and uh, help um, help down on that particular night. And uh, we're uh, and it looks like um, we've got Matt Moran coming along as well from uh, Master Chef and. Um, uh, paddock to play. We've got two more events scheduled at this point. The 22nd of February at Darlinghurst yep. from 9pm yep. and the second event under the railway viaduct in C- Cathedral Street in Woolloomooloo. That's on the 1st of March from 6pm. Right. Manu and Daniel, as you mentioned, will be there. What can people do maybe to get involved in this and to lend a hand? Because obviously you're going to need some help to take this around the yep. country. Absolutely. So we've got uh, we've got a, a page established on Facebook, which is called One Meal, uh, O N E Meal, and so people can like the page, and it'd, it'd be nice if they could also share it on their own or invite their friends along. So obviously, the more um, more support we get, the better. Um, people are welcome to volunteer their time, and whether that uh, might be a one-off or they might be available once a month or whatever that may be, that'd be fantastic. And then we find some of those volunteers also like to take it to that next step further um, and they're willing to cook meals and so forth. We've had, um, and, and over and above that, we've had uh, some really generous donations off a lot of people. Um, Johnson & Johnson have actually donated, um, you know, a lot of uh, toiletry items that uh, are a necess- necessity for a lot of people. So we've got... Uh, you know, a lot of that, and we've had blankets and so forth, because we're looking at just not just going down just to feed these uh, these people that are less fortunate than us, but uh, to be able to give them something where we can possibly to assist them, um, you know, going forward. Check it out on Facebook, One Meal. Paul Mackin, well done on getting the, uh, the One Meal campaign off the ground, mate. All the very best with it, and we'll certainly stay in touch as it continues to grow and... Uh, Hopefully we'll see it all over the place in the not-too-distant future. Thanks very much.